everybody. This is Pam with Jesus Junk Journals, and I've got a little bit different setup because I am over on the side of my studio where I do painting and wet work, so to speak. So, looks a little different. Lighting's a little different, um, for better or worse. So, <laughs> my paper keeps sticking to my jelly plate. I'm going to do jelly plate printing on the backs of these. I mentioned that... Um, that's kind of the first challenge, step number one, if I can remember to do it, is to put something on the backs of these just to get something on there, even if I go over it later or cover it up or whatever. At least it's just not that sterile white. So I decided I'm going to use my jelly plate. It's still got stuff on it from the last time I used it, which is fine. It may or may not come up. And... Maybe I need to clean it because some of these are getting kind of thick. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start. Now, these pages, this whole journal is sort of blue as far as colors. Blue and green. Blue-green. Kind of oceany colors. So, I'm going to do that. And I want to try to stay... I always say this. I want to stay subtle. <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm going to be subtle. So I'm going to use some blues and greens and a lot of white. So I'm just going to put a little bit of blue, some white, zinc. So if you've never done jelly plate printing, you, I'm using acrylic paint. It's really fun and easy, and you, you ought to try it if you haven't got a jelly plate yet. I've got a roller that oh, great. I didn't clean off, so it's stuck to my page. Here's my roller covered with paint. Here's an old journal that I used to clean it off in between. So after I roll it out, I just roll excess paint off on these. And so it's off camera here, but that's what I'm doing. So let me, let me just roll this paint out and see what happens. <laughs> And I've got stencils to go to use if I decide I want to put more than one layer or whatever. But I'm going to start with this. So here's one of my pages. I already cut the edge off and then I remembered, oh yeah, I need to paint. So I'm going to try and get that on there centered. And then I've got a new gadget and I forget what it's called. It's made by Speedball. And if you look for printmaking on Amazon or wherever, it'll show this thing and it just helps you to mash it down so it doesn't hurt your fingers. <laughs> and so I got it and let's see, so far I like it. It's real slick, works really well. And then you just pull it up. And that's what I got. And that looks pretty good, I think. Pretty happy with that. So I'll set that over to dry. Still got some blue on here. So let me try. I've got this, ooh, Key West. That sounds promising. Haven't even opened it yet. This is from Walmart, the Apple Barrel uh, acrylic paint from Walmart that's really, really cheap. And then I've got another one <clears throat> that's patio paint, a little darker shade of that same kind of blue-green color. So I'm going to put just, again, with the subtle, you know, put a few drops of that, a couple of drops, oop, well, or that, that amount of that, and some white. And roll that out. My roller's wanting to be uncooperative today, it looks like. to get some paint on those edges. Center that over the middle part. <clears throat> okay. And that looks good to me. Yeah. 
I'm not getting anything on these edges though because of this dried paint. So I'm just gonna pull some of it off. And I've got my gel plate sitting on a piece of paper so that I can slide it around and it doesn't stick down to anything. It's just a random piece of paper on the back of this. Phthalo green, this is a little golden paint. Let me try a little bit of that. And some more of the original paint I had on here. And then white. Hmm, this is a different roller. Oops. So that is a very thin, thin coat of paint. And then I'll take this page, put it on here. And so if you don't wanna do jelly plate printing, you can do uh, stenciling or decoupage or combine it, whatever you want. Whatever you enjoy doing, that's a good thing for you to do. And some of those don't need to be done before you put the journal together. You might wanna wait and do some of those later. That looks interesting. Big blob of blue there I'm gonna to have to do something about later. Okay, so I've got one more sheet of pages and I'm gonna go, let's see, I think I'll do, of course, white. And then just a little bit of this light turquoise kind of color. Because I said subtle, right? That last, that last page was not subtle, but let's see. Let's see if I can do it. Ooh, I got a lot of paint on there. I can feel it moving around. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Okay. Wonder what is that spot there? <laughs> there now okay so those are my those are the pages to my journal that I've just done so now I'm going to go through the kit and see because like these journaling cards when you turn those over they're going to be white too so it doesn't hurt to put a little something on those let's see what, let's see what happens with this and I mentioned Putting it through a stencil. So I've got quite a few stencils actually. I have this one that looks like fish scales that actually I think would be perfect for if I can figure out how to get it on just those two. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, that was almost bad. Okay. So. Lay it over the stencil. And so I've got that now on the backs of those. And then when I pull this up, and I always forget to get a pan of water ready. Okay, so there's still the scales now of the ink that's left. And so I'm going to take these, I think, and just kind of lay those on there. And again, it's really about just getting some color on the backs. So see, that pulled the opposite of that up. And that, let's see, will that show? I will stencil on whatever whatever else needs to be done. But I'm just gonna look through these. Any kind of journaling cards like um, those three would probably, it would be good to use some paint on. I'm gonna lay this down. Should have done this. Should have done this before I wet it. So this is gonna be kind of wet, which is not a good idea. You don't wanna get too wet on the back of this paper because it will soak through 
and it can make your ink, uh, the lines soften if it gets wet, because this is water soluble ink on these printers, if it's an inkjet printer. So that is pretty wet, but I think I'll get away with it. Then I've just got this one to do, so I'm gonna pull this off, lay this one on it. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting. And then I need something on the back of this one. So I'm just going to use what I have here. And I can add um, to it with stenciling. So that that is what that ended up being. <laughs> the inside of this file folder is going to show... These won't show because, well, yes, they will. They're envelopes. Okay, so let me reapply some paint. And I think just a little bit of the blue, maybe. And roll that on. Hey, what I'm just gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do plain and just let it be color instead of trying to do a stencil. Yeah, yeah, that's just a nice base to work from. And I've still got blue on here, so I'm gonna <clears throat> just add some white to it and you know whatever's on the bottom will show on top it flips around so whatever the color the, the paint that's left on the plate will end up being on top and then this color will be on the bottom i mean this white sorry this white will be on the bottom and i think these side flaps will show so i'm going to go ahead and do those and i think the top flaps so i might as well just do the whole thing And I managed to get that in some paint. So be sure and check this because you don't want to like rub over it with wet paint and get paint all over your artwork. Okay. Pretty. And then this map may or may not, I mean, you can use it however you want. This is actually like another two page spread and so I think I'll put ink on that I mean some paint on that and I'm just going to roll the white out and use what I have here so that's got color on the back of that and that is it this page doesn't need any so I think we're good Okay, so I am back. All my paint was dry, and so I started cutting out all my stuff. And I thought that I would come in and just do some things so that pieces and parts don't get lost. This is page four, and I've got it all kind of cut up, but I wanted to hold, keep it together so you could see what this page looks like upside down. I'm going to cut this out. It says top for scratch pad. We're going to make a little scratch pad. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this off. And we're gonna make a scratch pad that goes into one of these flaps. So take this, fold it in half, and this is going to bleed over. That's intentional. That's so we didn't get any white paper showing. So fold it in half, and then fold each side in to the middle fold. like that, and like that, and that's gonna fold over there, and you'll end up with the whale at the top of it. And so then you need the paper for the scratch paper. And so what I did is I took a piece of copy paper, just thin copy paper, and I cut it into, I think it was eight, eight sheets maybe, two and a half inches wide, and of course it's eight and a half inches wide paper, 11, eight and a half by 11, so 11 this way. So I was able to get, I think four this way and then cut them in half 
so I ended up with eight. So two and a half by four. And then these pages will go up into the top of this. And we're going to punch a couple of holes. And I'm going to use my crop a dial. I'm going to use, <laughs> this is the only thing I use my crop a dial for. Because I don't like the way it does grommets. But... <laughs> So it's kind of an expensive paper puncher, but I, I do like it for this. So I'm going to use the small hole punch and I'm going to punch two holes and I'm going to place them kind of closer to the bottom just because I don't want to mess up my whale. And so I'm going to punch one over here and then one over here. Try to miss that whale as much as I can. And then I'm going to use, you have to tie it. And, and so it's like, I don't want to use a big fat ribbon because I don't want to lose my whale. So I'm going to use string and I've got Baker's twine. If you've got Baker's twine, you could use that. I have this cord that I got at the dollar, dollar store. And I think the black actually blends in pretty well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a clip to hold this while I make my make my cord behave. Okay, and so I'm gonna get enough to where I can tie it. And feed this through the hole on both sides. And then tie, just tie a bow. I mean, you could just tie a knot, I guess. Maybe, maybe I do that. Maybe I'll just tie a knot, part of the notepad. But in this case, where we're trying to preserve the whale, <laughs> and then the ends will do whatever they're gonna do. But I mean, at least you can still see your whale. And then this, so here's your page, this, is going to be on one of these flaps. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out this flap. And this is just to glue into a side of a page. So I'm going to get my scoring board and score this flap. It's really hard to fold this these small areas without scoring them. So like that. This will glue onto one of your pages. When you open it up, inside will be your little notepad. So you're going to glue this in, and you want to glue it as close to this edge and away from this fold as you can, because this will bind up in your fold, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to take my fabric tack and glue it in. And in theory, you could refill this notepad if you ever ran out of paper because you could just, well, no, you couldn't because it's a knot. If you could untie your knot, you would be able to uh, refill it, but that's up to you. I doubt that that day would ever come, but if it did, you could. Okay, so there it is, and I'm going to just set that aside, and later we'll glue that into the journal. And then on the other one, it says flap pocket. And so I'm going to cut this out the rest of the way. And ink it. Just want to get these done so we don't lose them. <laughs> so we don't lose any pieces and parts. Because when you start to cut all these little things out, it could get really confusing. And actually, I'm going to take my 2-inch punch and figure out which way is up and then just punch a little notch in this kind of center it a little bit and ink that and then this will glue inside this flap which i almost had cut out just trying not to bore you guys by having you watch me cut things out and this will glue, so this, oh, let me score this.
Do you guys craft like this where everything's just like on top of each other? <laughs> Seems like how I do it. Like, and then uh, this will this will glue into a place wherever you want it in your journal, and then this will be the pocket at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that, and I'm just going to use my art glitter glue for that, which I haven't cleaned out lately, so I'm hoping the glue will come out. Yay! Not very good, but it will it will come out. Okay. And there you go. Now we'll come back. I'll come back and do something about that up there. But for now, at least we've got our pieces together. So I can always go back and ink the edges. Got that over just a little bit, so I'm going to trim it off. I'm going to come back with my vintage photo and do my do my inking, but I'm going to come back too with some blue because of all the blue oceany imagery on this journal and try to hit it with some blue too because I think it'll be pretty with both. Okay, so there's your flap for that. When you open it up, there'll be a pocket. So I'm going to lay that aside now and then these two pieces will go together and I'm going to, I'm not quite ready to put this together yet. So what I'm, this is, how am I gonna keep this together? I wanna keep where it says top flap, and bottom pocket together. So I'm gonna cut this off and then when I decide exactly where in the journal to put that, I will finish this up. I'm going to leave those two kind of stuck together so I don't lose them and set those aside. Okay, so here's another one that I want to get put together so we don't lose it. This is page three. I've cut it out, but I'm, I'm going to show you what it looks like so you can find it in your stack of papers. This is kind of what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and put this piece together here. And this is another flap. So I'm going to finish cutting this out and this out. This is going to be a double pocket on the other side of that. So, finish cutting this out. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink this. Oh, I need to score this flap too. All these little flaps. I added a lot more um, sort of side flaps and things to this journal than any other journal I've done, I think. <laughs> or at least any of the mini journals. Okay, so let me set this aside for a second. And then this is the pocket, and this is gonna go like this on the inside. So you'll put it in your journal, and then when you open it up, it will have this double pocket. And so we're gonna glue it here, here, and here, and then right in the middle. And so I'm gonna fold it I don't really want to fold there, but I'm going to fold it because I want to punch my little notches for the pockets so, so we know there are pockets there. And I'm going to center that. And I'm, I'm using these lines here and measure from the edges just to get it centered somewhat. Cut little notches like that. And I'm going to go ahead and ink. And like I said, you'll do around the edge. And then in the middle where that fold is. And then glue it down here. Like that. And then that will be ready to add into your journal whenever you're ready. And then we have another one. Like I said, I got a lot, of, a lot of these little pockets. This is Mr. Mr. Whale here, and there's a fold there. And I'm going to go ahead and store him and this flap. Put that fold on the. That. 
so if he's folded and then he'll hook on wherever you want him to and then we've got the baby whales as pockets on the inside so open it up and here's two baby whale pockets and I think actually I, I'm gonna cut just a little bit off so that they don't bind each other up at all cut a little notch and ink it and I think I do want to add a little bit of blue ink to these because there's not this this is really almost kind of a black and white image so I'm going to add a little bit of blue let me take the time Now I'm going to glue these on three sides, of course, because it is a pocket. Get this as close over here to this edge as I can. And then the other one, I'm going to glue as close to this fold. I don't want to do anything to bind it up where it's going to attach to the journal. And then that will fold. And that, oh, I did not get that pocket. Try that again. <laughs> I got that sticking way off the edge. There. Better. Okay. So he's done. So I am going to stop now because I think I've got enough for you to work on here. You've got your inking on the back side of the pages and then you've got these little things to put together and so that's it for today and we'll come back and do some more tomorrow so thanks for watching and if you like the video click like think about subscribing and i'll see you on the next video bye bye